Welcome in, you guys. You know this. This is Danita, your host at the Booty Bands More Than Fitness podcast. And I just, right before I hit record, I was like, let's have some fun. Let's do this. So you guys, I don't know if you remember, but it, I battled, well, back in 2020, right during the pandemic, I did this amazing podcast with Dr. Patricia. And she has been interested in preventative and curative healing through natural medicine. She's my type of doctor. She is a board certified family physician. She's received her training in family medicine from the University of Pittsburgh. And she's a graduate of integrative, integrative medicine fellowship from the University of Arizona through the direction of Dr. Andrew Wheel. She has a special interest in mind-body medicine, stress reduction, medical acupuncture, women's health, which is going to be a big one tonight, and mm -hmm. weight management. And so we're so excited to bring Dr. Patricia in because why? We're going to be talking about the type, the topic today is honoring and befriending your hormones. Just the fact of her saying that title, I was like, you're in alignment with me immediately. It was just a literally embracing those hormones mm. and coming into a befriending an understanding and connecting an alignment of our hormones. Wow. That was so beautiful. So welcome in Dr. Patricia to the podcast tonight. Booty bands and barbells helps busy women sculpt and tone their bodies in just 15 minutes a day through our physical products and our one-on-one -on -one coaching. Hi, Danita. I'm so excited to be back and dive deeper and hopefully serve the women who's listening. Yeah, to honor and feel, really feeling friends with who they truly are. And we are hormonal, you know. We are hormonal. That is for sure. We yes. are. <laughs> and say it in an affirmative way, because that's the common theme for those who haven't kind of been in who haven't dived deep into incubating their womanhood uh there's kind of that um this association or like the hormone is the enemy or or like the hormone is not part of you it's like outside of you like i'm uh i'm hormonal right now mm. you know, not realizing that is part of you. And versus saying, oh, I'm hormonal, you know, like having that awareness, that acceptance and that um, love for what makes you, you. And, and that's my hope, what, what, you know, the mindset shift is so important because I can give you 10 million list of hormone, natural supplement and homeopathic, but if you don't shift that mindset, it's kind of like giving a two-year-old a hammer and a nail and you don't know how to use it, you know? So anyway, I'll start with that. <laughs> I love it. I, I I feel so much alignment already, truly. And and just as you were talking, uh, something that came up for me as far as exactly what you said there is the old version of us was it's like a fighting against it. And yeah, like a sh it's a it's a mindset thing of oh no, now I'm in my cycle, or oh no, mm. now I'm having all those hormonal swings or whatever. And um and now as I've done some research on understanding and syncing with our hormones yes. is actually that they're messages, they're signs, they're there to teach us, empower us, to take us to the next level, to yes. take us to another dimension of who we really are meant to become, which yes. has been honestly really groundbreaking for me to honor and embrace those messages that it's, that's giving me. Absolutely. So we're, when we're connecting and aligning with our juice, with our fuel, our hormones, it will absolutely support us. So concepts that uh, I wish women would hear is that number one, PMS is optional. Number two, menopause is optional, meaning the bad side or like the dis-ease side of menopause. Menopause and PMS and pregnancy can feel smooth, flowy, and not as like here and there, you know, the polarity of like, ah, uh, and then down, and then bloating, because those messages, when we're feeling diseased, when we're feeling not 
optimum from my experience supporting at least 10 to 15,000 women are signals from our body that it was dismissed. It wasn't heard. So then the body feels like there is no choice but to get our attention, to slow down, to rest and reflect, to finish things versus keep starting new things. No? So we are, by nature, biologically, women are cyclical in nature. We are never linear. So that's like the feminine paradigm, right? The feminine is waves and cycles. It's seasons. The masculine energy. So we all have masculine and uh, ma uh, feminine energy. Masculine is very linear. Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. So there's no, like you don't see the sun, the masculine energy having cycles. Like it's just always bright and sunny. And that's how a male biology typically thrives in. Predictability, nine to five, you know, pushing. A women's, um, if we really tap into, like if you see the map of our hormones, it has a low, uh, slightly trending up, a peak, and then it goes down again. So if you ride that wave, then we really sync, connect, honor, and we can produce even more than who we were and our counterparts. And what do I mean by that? It could be in your CEO, it could be in your uh, you know work, it could I mean our biology. Think of this as a woman. Do you need to work hard to grow a human being? You sit with your egg. Do you need to work hard to create and form life? You open. You literally need to receive and have pleasure to make something. Because when a woman is in that inspired state, versus like, oh, I need to do this. I need to check, 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 check. But if she's like, oh, life is so good. Like, I'm really feeling my body right now. Oh, I'm receiving that compliment. I can sit still right now and not feel guilty of doing 10 million other tasks that's on my planner. If you can really master also that pull energy, everything comes. So we're very magnetic in terms of that. Uh, so I'm talking both mindset and biology, you know, am, am I making sense or am I talking? No, it, it absolutely mm -hmm. makes sense to me, but let's yeah. even bring it down a little bit for those that are listening. Let's actually yes. give some examples of this. I'm going to share one example of what you exactly what you're talking about. And if you've got some examples, that'd be great to share too. Um, so one example of, of what comes up for me when you were explaining that was the old version of me would go through PMS during my mm -hmm. cycle. And what I would do is take my doll, suppress it, yes. push it away, hide in a closet, isolate, yell right. at everybody, push everyone away. And I realized that it only just worsened the situation. And mm -hmm. then what I recognized was that our left and right brain hemispheres are actually colliding during the time of that, that estrogen swing yes. through the, men the menstruation. And um, what it does is it's actually teaching us something. It's saying, have you been true to your true heart's desires? Yes. Have you said no to the things that don't serve you? So it really is about, have you created those boundaries in your life that you need to? And if you have, you'll recognize that those things go away during that cycle. So for me, I will journal write and say, what do I need to say yes to? What do I need to say no to? What are those really clear intentions that I need to lay out in my life? Because if I don't, it really is going to hit me hard during my cycle. Right, right. I love that. So um, PMS tends to, what I also hear is uh, most women will power through 
right? And like you were doing, kind of take the medicine to ease off the pain. And I'm not against, of course, compassion. We need that sometimes. But making sure we get to the root cause, hang on, how, why did I even have this menopause right now, uh, menopause, like PMS right now? Was it because I didn't give myself like an honor my body when I needed to slow it down a little bit? Or like you were saying, honoring your heart's desire versus the guilt of not doing X, Y, and Z. Um, so going back to, I love those reflection questions. I think questions helps kind of bring awareness and check in what is it that we really need, want, and what can really support us in our goals without burning ourselves out you know so it's that push and pull energy and and when I say we are seasonal and cyclical so we have four seasons that are also aligned with our hormonal health so one is the first seven days which is winter season is our menstrual phase so when you think of winter what do you see in nature do mud does mother earth produce is it in hibernation is it resting what does winter bring out to you yeah the leaves fall so there's not producing it's resting yes. hibernating uh feeling warm yes mm -hmm. yes so that's those are the things that you need to that would really help your menstrual cycle is and if you're in menopause, uh, you can align with the moon cycle. Um, new moon is menstrual phase, is winter phase. So that first seven days, you really give yourself the time of like, okay, I'm in my new moon, I'm in my menstrual phase. How can I rest and reflect more? How can I allow myself to slow it down because I'm in my winter? Okay, so we're, I have hibernation. What comes after winter? It's spring. Spring. Right? And when you take the time to rest in spring, the roots are going to be stronger. The bloom are going to be stronger. So what happens in spring? You bloom, right? There is newness. So that's also waxing moon for those who are in menopause. So they don't have a menstrual cycle to tell them what cycle they're in. They have the moon, the outer moon. Our womb is the inner moon. So springtime, the questions would be, how can I, what things do I want to start and initiate? New things, new beginnings, or restart from my past cycle? Because you rested, right? Like you were, you know, you're, estrogen drops all the other hormones drops and now it's starting to rise spring and then comes ovulation or full moon um so peak that's our peak hormones you're like oh my gosh i feel so beautiful i can do 10 million this is prime time like what is it that i want to receive in the world what help? Like, I'm open. Like, I'm so beautiful. My hormones are serving me. Like, you know, biologically, if you want to procreate, this is the time that you also connect with your partner, right? Let's produce something. So this is when you connect, you network, you're out there. Um. So the question is, like, who can uh, co-create with me? No. How can I maximize my productivity? That feels so good. No ovulation, full moon, and then it drops again. And this is where most women get it wrong because we were so intoxicated with, oh my gosh, I feel so beautiful. I'm so productive. I'm like doing my eight hour job in two hours. You know, you're like caffeinated. And we get intoxicated with that. And we think that's who we are all the time. And so we keep trying to reproduce that on our wa waning phase, post-ovulation hormones drops again. So fall season, what happens in fall, right? 
we there's a bit of completion after you network right you produce something and then it's harvest time and what happens after harvest do you want to keep working after harvest you just harvested all those apples and whatever money and all those pumpkins celebration you all start to slow down again you celebrate what you reaped don't go in ovulation and springtime again and women forget to celebrate and like really be a queen you know like oh good job like i deserve this like i'm gonna eat all those apples or gonna save them whatever that's where we we miss the mark like the fall season and the winter season we mm -hmm. always wanted full moon we always wanted like full moon is like the sun you know we are kind of in that patriarchal paradigm of doing 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 i'm not against doing but we're cyclical it's the women who really embodies the surrender and the celebration so i'll stop there no, that was very well worded. Yeah. And I've heard of the four phases of knowing yeah. is like follicular, luteal, yeah. the menstrual, all that stuff. And, but what I really liked is the comparison of the, the seasons that you did there. And it's so true as far as everything I know of those phases, it, it literally spot on mm -hmm. nailed each one of those different phases. And it's a great way to look at how we operate as women, as we go through those and allow ourselves to let go and rest during those yeah. times that we need to. You're right. right. And I also think it's just becoming, we do become addicted to it of that high. It's this, this right. orphans, just right. like any addiction that's out there. You are like, Oh, I, I can do so much. The adrenaline's up. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm so, I'm so powerful. Look at me. I can do all this stuff. It is hard to sit back and let go, yeah. and, and and to let relax, go like, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. Um, as far as hormones go and just kind of like when they're out of balance, um, what do you normally see as common for like maybe like middle-aged women um, that are just really struggling with hormones? What do you commonly see there? A lot of um, mind fog, a lot of almost like uh, ability to focus has been lost, uh, almost like a lack of clarity in who they really are and what feels good from a body level sleep definitely there's a lot of sleep issues that i see weight like it's harder to lose the weight um because you're kind of like in that again you want to be in full moon and summer all the time peak and the nervous system then feels you're always in the unsafe zone or paras or sympathetic, which is sympathetic is the state of the nervous system where you feel like you always need to fight and flight versus, um, so then the hormones are always also dysregulated. The cortisol hormones, the stress hormone is high and cortisol makes us want to hang on to weight because you're not safe. I can't lose that weight. I'm going to pack that in because the world is not safe. I can't even rest and celebrate, you know? Mm -hmm. And then when you're also not able to rest and celebrate when your stress management is not good, then the sleep, and you know how it is when you don't sleep, your you don't build lean muscle. Also, yeah. You don't feel lean muscle and you don't yes. all, you can't get a faster metabolism right. without that lean muscle. So it all yes. connects for sure. Right. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, for those that have had hysterectomies, how does that affect their hormones and how does it make them different as far as somebody that hasn't had one? Great question. So there are, uh, for simplicity's sake, there's two types of hysterectomy. One that preserves your ovaries. The other one that takes out everything. So if you take out including the ovaries, then you'll have what we call surgical menopause. So it's a bit hard, like not a bit. It's actually very challenging because there's no transition point. So immediately that, that hormone environment, which used to be your home, 
where you live and how you operate was surgically removed. So you you get into this, you know, hot flashes, lack of focus, sleep. Um, it, it, it's it's hard. It's very challenging. If if your ovaries were preserved, then you can still kind of transition a bit more uh natural. Um so harder self-care, you know, nutrition, nourishing meals, things that can really warm the body, um, things like soup. So this is Chinese medicine, like really kind of nourish the body, whole foods, plant-based, high omegas will really help the other inflammatory markers just not go into like, oh my gosh, what's happening, you know? Um, and of course, sometimes uh, sim uh, like external hormones or uh, um, like synthetic or uh, what, what, what I'm losing my, my term. Like very, it's not artificial hormone, but uh, I'll, I'll get to it later. But hormones, hormone replacement therapy may have a place in the beginning because it's very challenging when it's surgical. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah, definitely. If um if you had one that they would have to speak to the doctor about what type of hormone replacement if you just took all ovaries out for that. So thank you for ans ask answering that. Bioidentical hormone. There's that's what I bioidenticals. Was yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, what type of hormone imbalances um are common after having children? Hmm. That's a great question. So, I mean, so postpartum, there's many things happening. Um, you're almost like in that luteal phase, longer luteal phase, and a little bit longer menstrual phase. So your hormones are still very depleted. Mm -hmm. And that's where some of the sources of postpartum depression also happens. Why it happens? Uh, because it takes about, especially if you're breastfeeding, it takes about like six to nine months before you have an ovulation, meaning before it rises up again. So you're a bit depleted, lower, you're in luteal, and luteal is fall. So it's almost like you're still not quite complete. You're in fall season. You're completing while you're taking care of that newborn. So nature kind of designed it in a way that you don't want to do 10 million other things. It's not going to support that while your baby is still a newborn. You know, like just focus, hone in to that newborn and you. Like in the fall, you would celebrate yeah, and you would go into the harvest. Oh, that yeah. makes so much sense. I love yeah. the seasons. It really kind of pulls yeah. everything in together. Um, so my question, I mean, this, you mentioned um, about weight gain. What do you commonly see if somebody is overweight? What are, what are their hormones doing that are out of balance? I've heard of like es extra estrogen, but I want to hear from you. Like, what are some things that you really commonly you see that people are just really struggling with weight issues? Yeah. So very high estrogen, which then competes with testosterone. Um, so our fat cells, like when we gain weight, our fat cells are also storage for hormones. And we tend to store high estrogen and then the fat also converts more estrogen. So that estrogen, um, you know, makes our metabolism more sluggish um, and also kind of shifts the metabolic pathway to not produce testosterone, which also is kind of our drive, uh, helps us build the muscle more effectively. So then you want to see, okay, how can I, have optimum amount of estrogen, not in excess, and then support my testosterone is two things. One, detoxify from excess estrogen through many ways. One, food. 
cruciferous vegetables helps detoxify excess estrogen. Two, um, folate. So methylation is supported by folate, a B vitamin. Um, methylation is a detoxifying pathway for estrogen. So that's one, no? You want to e eliminate excess. Sauna is also a very good detoxifying uh, way for es excess estrogen. And then testosterone, you want to think adrenal glands. So uh, you want to support the adrenal glands by stress management, um, light and darkness. Like you want to have good darkness at night. Turn off anything. You want no light to come through your eyes. So your pineal gland, the main command center, will tell your adrenals like, you can sleep. It's all good. And that helps the adrenal to produce the right amount of testosterone. Mm. Other ways, of course, supplements, zinc, maca, are very good for testosterone health. So those would be my top two go-to, if, even if you're going to get it uh, over the counter. I really love your thorough explanation of that because mm -hmm. that is everything I've been taught as far as the estrogen. And I'm glad you mentioned the sweating it out part because, yes, mm -hmm. by actually sweating, we can get rid of those extra estrogen hormones that are creating havoc on the testosterone. Yes. And, um, I love that you mentioned sleep because so often as women, we go into that hyperdrive of wanting to continue to keep, you know, so many women are eating great and they're working out seven days a week. And they're just over here, like trying all the things. And they're like, why am I not losing it? And in reality, they're not looking at, well, stress affects mm -hmm. your sleep. Sleep mm -hmm. is affecting all the adrenals that you're talking about, which is affecting your testosterone. Uh, testosterone affects your muscle growth. Muscle yeah. growth affects your ability to your, your metabolism to burn more fat at yeah. rest. And so it really, it has such an entirely component of everything all working together that people often just want to just do one thing. They want to just take one cookie cutter plan. They want to just do one pill. They want to just one injection. You know, they just want to like hurry up and like sum this entire thing up of balance and just try to like hurry up in one thing. And so I really appreciate your explanation of the, like we call it a total integration of looking at your body as a full picture and seeing how it can actually going back to our topic of working with befriending your hormones, befriending your body. There's so, even a, I just come up with this real, I mean, this is so beautiful that emotions are messages and often of us, so many are suppressing them. And you yes. mentioned disease of disease and how that just creates all the havoc within our body. That's a whole nother topic. We'll go into another time, yes. but um, really thorough, a beautiful explanation there. So thank you for that. The next question I have for you is um, we hear questions about thyroid all the time. What do you, what, what do you mind sharing about what your common things that you know about thyroid? Thyroid, you know, thyroid is like this very complex endocrine organ, meaning like a hormonal organ that sits on the neck. And, you know, I've been on a search myself, like how can I simplify my approach in supporting thyroid? Like I also is medicine and I'm like is there an acupuncture point that will just address the thyroid and in my research it's a long answer but I'll get back to it is it's such like it's a spider it's connected to everything I can't just like have this cookie cutter access to heal the thyroid so that's one take home the thyroid is involved in everything the second thing is the thyroid is constantly bombarded by thyroid disruptors. And I would recommend for everybody to go and look at all the products that you use, you put on your skin, you drink, uh, your detergents. I would recommend for people to go into ewg.org, Environmental Working Group, and you will see uh, dust any of your product have thyroid disruptors. So what I'm trying to say is, number one, the thyroid is involved with everything. Number two, environment is key to help your thyroid thrive. And there's just so many thyroid disruptors in all of the products. 
And that connects to why thyroid medication is, if not that one of the top medication prescribed. And it's not genetic. Like most geneticists have already proven that genes only play at max 20% of your disease. It's the environment that it's in that triggers the disease. So with thyroid, it's more important because I'm like, huh, really? Like it's the top next to uh, statin medication or cholesterol medication is thyroid. Like seriously, all everybody is having thyroid issues and it's the environment. Mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Again, really great information and how knowledgeable you are. And I really love the approach that you take more of a holistic path. Uh, there's so many injections and medications and all that that's just really going around of those quick fixes. But I think the true medication is knowledge. And that's really what you're bringing today. And I really appreciate that. So um, I want to ask, is there anything that you feel like you would like to express for those that are listening? What do you feel like they need to hear? Uh, so many things, but it may sound overwhelming to those who are new in wellness and, and getting to feel like really you and befriending your hormones. I would say digest this information, but then lead with joy, self-leadership with love and joy. Like the journey of self-healing should be a fun one. You know, the moment you like find what works for you, it won't feel like overwhelming. Like, huh, what were they? They thought I need to take this, this, and this, and I need to do that, 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 that. Then it becomes again stress for you. So lead yourself with love. Then it becomes sustainable. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I, Oftentimes we don't, right? Oftentimes we're just going through it with immense stress and then realizing, yeah. wait, why are things not working? And then having all the things. So thank you for that. That's truly such an important and valuable lesson as it's often used a lot. But if we really take this moment and hear the words that you just said, how profound that statement really is. And sometimes we have to go through the experience of life to realize Wow, how important that is. Um, so thank you for sharing that. So if if those that are listening are just like, oh my gosh, man, this doctor Patricia is phenomenal. She's my type of doctor. What is it that you could um, maybe share so we can put a link down below so they could reach out, follow you and engage with you more? Absolutely. So please uh, come join my free community in Facebook. It's called The Thriving Woman. Um, I do retreats that are free to help you get over the survival mode and be your thriving best. You can also reach me. I do global coaching all over the world for women. Um, with, and my website is thrivewithdrpatricia.com. Yeah. Love it. Thank you for that. Awesome. Well, appreciate your time for being here and all of your knowledge and information that helped us in being able to befriend our hormones. Beautiful. And I enjoyed it. Thank you, Danita.
since you felt like this. 